Hi there, welcome back to Video Games and Education. This uh, episode is actually about puzzle games. Now, puzzle games are available widely across the internet. Um, so most of them are free. Now, there are little in-game purchases and whatnot. So, for example, there's Bejeweled Online, Tetris Online, and this is Candy Crush. Now, the benefit of puzzle games is that it works into logical thinking and creative thinking as well. So, I'm going to start here. Now, Facebook is blocked at most schools and, you know, any places of work, really. But these are also available on iPad, iPhones, and whatnot, um, and many different tablets. So, let me go ahead and show you. So, this is Candy Crush. It recently got famous for its ability to take what we know about puzzle games and shape games and actually take it to the next level. So right now I have to clear the jelly, so to speak, on Candy Crush. So it's your basic line up three of the colors or shapes, which will benefit students who are learning shapes and colors. And when you do that, some of the jelly disappears. So let's do that one more time. And this section, it's gone. <clears throat> so students will continue to do that throughout, you know, learning how to predict where things are going. So, for example, if I move these two here, this purple piece will fall down and land beside this one. So let's try it. Oh, I lied. It looks like we have a power up. So let's do that. So in this situation here, I can either move this up and everything will be brought down like that. So these games have a way of using logical thinking in, and it allows students to work with what they have and it doesn't have a specific method of completing the levels it just gives you the goal and students will be able to find their own way there as possible lesson plans you can use this for patterning you can use this for predicting pretty much this can fit really well with math and geometry because of the shapes and colors however you can also use it as maybe a reward for doing some work or if you're using class dojo if they cash in their points and that way they don't realize they're really using different creative ways of thinking for this game it's just a game so yep so there's that now tetris is easier to find if you just type in free tetris into your search bar you'll find free tetris.org now this website as far as i've seen was not blocked at many schools um, because it's Tetris and you choose the level that you want. So <clears throat> what we found is that Tetris is really good for incorporating with slides, translations, and rotations. So as you can see, that's what the blocks are. And Tetris, like its name, all the blocks are made out of four segments. So what you can do for classes is that you, you can have them work on this and try to see as far as they go. And every time when they're switching it, they need to know that moving left is a negative slide, moving right is a positive slide, and rotations obviously are like that. Students can also use connective blocks to create this on a more tangible level, um, while other students will be playing it online. There are different options for using these puzzle games. And I think it's fantastic for students to be able to see it. Now, Tetris has been around since the 80s, so it, it's kind of a standard, but you'd be surprised how many students don't actually know about Tetris anymore. So moving forward, another puzzle game, now if we're getting a little more comp complex, is Portal. Portal is an open-based first-person shooter. I use shooter lightly because it's actually a portal gun, a portal gun, not a gun and it allows users to create an entrance portal and an exit portal and you need to get from point A to point B using those portals. Now it is just loading right now. Hopefully if all goes well it actually will show in the screen capture so just give a few seconds. Now this game does require a bit more of a powerful PC And this game is about $19.99 on Steam. So 
it's just taking a while to load. All right, so this is just a demo of the actual game. So let's just go to new game here and we'll go to the first test chamber. Now it's divided into progressive testing um, where the first level is easiest and obviously the last level is the hardest. Okay, so I'm looking around, I don't know what's happening. Pick things up. And as you can see on the right hand side, it actually has what. All right, so what you see here is the entrance portal. Now, the portal is actually open on the opposite side, so there's the exit one. So I can actually see myself in the portal. So, so now I'm on the exit side. If I go back through, I'm inside. So this game is actually quite quirky, and it is very, very witty. So here's one of the first test chambers. I think there's a cube. So, if I step on here, the door will open. If I step off, it closes. So, logically, you pick up this object and you place it on the button. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completing each test. First, however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science material emancipation grid will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. For instance, the aperture science weighted storage cube. Alright, so level two. So it's a little quirky, so it shows you little ideas of what the uh, each test chamber is about, so here. Please place the weighted storage cube on the 1500 megawatt aperture science heavy duty super colliding super button. Alright, so here we see that the exit portal is moving. So now it's in. We want to make sure that when the portal shows up, it pops over here. So here's my entrance, and that's where I want the exit to be. So there you go. I can grab my cube. Oh, oh now I'm trapped. And pretty much that's how the game works. So let's just... I'm just going to pick this up. There we go. And now we want to wait for this to open with the button, which is right there. Perfect. Please move quickly to the chamber lock as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. Alright, now we just have to wait for the screen to change to the exit. And there we go. So that is level two. So I'm just going to exit the game. And there you go, the benefits of puzzle games. See you next time on Video Games and